Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, hello again. So, welcome back uh, to my next uh, lecture. So, this is the continuity of the previous lecture, number nine. It is uh, now again, it's uh, so let's reconstruct an of the function. It x zero. So what we had before, we had our point here. So this is our x o. So we have some function here. So these are our neighbor points. So this is these are some x of i here. So so we had. X I of Z neighbors of X O Z is equal to suppose we have M. So the best way to approximate f of x o is the is Taylor's expansion Taylor expansion of f of x i of j around x0 so that means f of x i of j is f of x o plus x i of j minus x o del f y del x. So it is now at the moment I have the function of x only. So it is f of x plus some error of x i of j. So this is just the first order. Yeah. First order First order Taylor expansion. So what we have seen before, when we derive our finite difference scheme, there we had delta x here times f x, and half delta x squared times f x x. So if you remember my previous lecture, but now since we don't have the equal distance here, but what we have, we have x i j so these are the neighbors so this is our any x i so these are some neighbors are x i of j so these are these all are x i of j so we don't we don't have any equal distance because we are from this point from this point to this is not delta x so it is just x i j minus x o and from here to this another neighbor from here to this another neighbor so therefore we have different neighbor here. So now j is roaming from 1 to m. I write two type of methods. For example, 
matter one, I assume, suppose f of x o approximates is nearest never value. So, let x min be the nearest grid of x o. For example, in this case, so I am here, this is my x o, my nearest point is this one. Yeah, so I assume that I approximate our f of x o, so which we want to approximate here. I assume that this value is very close, so I approximate this one to this one. Yeah, that is the assumption. So, but this nearest this value I know the minimum value and all, all other value are also known. So therefore, what I do that I can rewrite this equation. So this implies f of x min f of x o approximate of f of x min yeah so this we can assume and the error of x min is suppose zero so that is our first assumption so i define i call this equation is a 10.1. So this relation may be 10.2. So then what I can write from 10.1. So from 10.1 to 10.2, what we can write that f of x i j which is now i f of x o i approximate by f of x min f of x min plus x i j minus x o of f of x plus e of x i j so that i can write so where my j is 1 to m so this is my my equation so, since the discrete value at all x i j as well as f of x min, so this is x min is one of the x i j, one of the neighbor. So, since this are, these two are known, since f of x i j and f of x min are known. we can write so we can write that i just put it together f of x i j minus f of x min is equal to x i j minus x o f of x plus e of x i j j is equal to 1 to m yeah and now what we have now this is known this value we know all the, the coordinate of all neighbor point x i j and we know the our arbitrary point x o but what we do not know that the f of x so for the sake of simplicity so in order to make our computation very uh, very or our symbol we just make a very simple symbol we denote uh, this difference of this function and uh, the neighbor value as some another coefficient suppose let 
let us define a is equal to f of x, yeah, d of x j is equal to, I define this value here, f of x i j e j I define e of x i j and b j is f of x i j minus f of x o. So, this is now 10.3. So, then 10 point, the system of equation 10.3 can be rewritten as, so I just write in this symbolic form, so left hand side is bj is equal to d of xj times a plus e of j. So, j is 1 to m. So, it is like 10.4. Yeah. So, here what we have? So, we have one unknown. Which is a. Yeah. So, this is the error of our approximation and we have M equations. So, we have chosen our H so that we have always this is about 3 delta X so that we always have m is greater than 1. It means number of number of equations are Number of equation is larger than number of unknown. So we have one unknown and we have larger than one equation. So this is we get we obtain. A overdetermined system of equations. Yeah. Now we have to solve this uh, overdetermined system. If never points are close to x o we have smaller error yeah in the approximation if never points are far from x zero we have a bit larger error. Yeah. Therefore, we use the weight functions, which I have described in the order director. We associate the weight as a function of 
of distance from x zero to its neighbors x i of j. So now, how to do that? How to compute? How to solve this overdetermined system? Yeah. So now, with this overdetermined system, we determine a by minimizing the error yeah so we minimize the error of all the, the error which we have e of j from this equation yeah so this error is nothing else it is i put this part on the right hand side on the left hand side ej is equal to a minus sorry b minus dxj a yeah so that means we minimize the functional f of a is equal to like as uh, the sum the weighted sum of wj ej square which is j is equal to 1 to m yeah so you know from the calculus so this is equal to i can write j is equal to 1 to m wj so what is our ej our ej is coming from here b so here it is bj yeah b of j minus dx of j into a whole square yeah so let us define this as a 10.5 this as a 10.6 so what is minimization mean? So you know from the basic calculus, minimization means we use the point. Means you take the derivative d f a by d a, which you make it zero yeah or so you just take the derivative of this functional and if it is zero and then you get after that either minimum or maximum so the, the basic condition of minimization is that somehow the derivative is somewhere is not changing then you get either the minimum or maximum now from this now you we apply this derivative this implies from equation number 10.6, I just write d by dA of the, what is the f? This uh, f is the, the summation, summation of wj bj minus dxj times a square yeah this is should be zero so or this implies what we get we apply the first 10 rule yeah because this w here z runs from 1 to m since the w is nothing else uh, this is the, this is a weight function distance function it is independent of a now I can write this summation out is equal to 1 to m 
W of J D by D A of function B J minus D X J times A whole square is equal to zero. Now again, what we do that we use the product uh, chain rule. So this implies the summation doesn't change. J is equal to one to M W J d by d a. So now I apply the chain rule that d of uh, b j minus d x a times a whole square by d of derivative with respect to b j minus d x a times a times d of b j minus d x j into a divided by d a this is equal to zero so from here what we get that is summation j is equal to one to m w j times the derivative of this two is two times this value itself inside the bracket b j minus d x j a times the derivative of this, this is a cost, it is independent of A, this is independent of A, you can take it out, so here we get minus D of XA, because DA by DA is 1, this is equal to 0, so from here what we get finally, now let us come to the next, next side, so what does it mean, so minus you can take it out, 2 you can take it out from the summation, then you put on the right hand side. So from here we get the summation of J 1 to M B J D X J minus summation of you just open the bracket J is equal to 1 to M. So A times, so A also you can take it out A times W J. So here we have, so I think here WJ also here. So I have to write here WJ, here WJ, and then this DXJ minus minus plus. Yeah? So this is a plus here. Yeah, this minus goes. So this minus is taking out because uh, this is a bracket. Now we get DX of J square is equal to zero. And now we can, from here, you can get explicitly your A is equal to, this you put on the right hand side, the summation of WJ, BJ, DXJ, BJ divided by summation of this part, WJ, DXJ square. So this is nothing else, this is our F of X. So we get a derivative, so unknown, we can get explicitly, now the summation runs from 1 to m. Now we come back to our original, uh, original Taylor expansion. So our, our interpolation was, so our interpolation is now, F of X O is equal to so F of X min, yeah, that we had already in the beginning, so we have defined it was I think some ten point one it was ten point one minus now X O minus X I J or is a plus x i j minus x o of f of x. So this is our, so once we know our derivative and then we get uh, our uh, approximation. So it is, now we will have nothing else. So it was our Taylor expansion before. So this is minus x of mean minus x o 
times the derivative at a point x o. So this is our interpolation formula. So now we have approximated that we have assumed that we approximate f of x zero as x of x min, and then this is the correction. So this was the mistake we has we, which we have committed before, and now this is the correction we have now corrected. Now one interesting thing is that if the the x o is exactly one of the grid point, yeah, one of the neighboring point. Then what will happen? So we approximate this value is zero, yeah. The difference between these two is zero. Then we get exact interpolation. So the remark if x o is one of the x i of j, yeah, if it is exactly falling to the neighbor, this implies f of x o is exact since the second term is equal to zero. Same if it is exact, then this is zero. Then we get exact interpolation. So, which is the nice, uh, nice property? Yeah. So, uh, I think now this is the first order, and now in the next uh, lecture, I, I do the second order approximation because the first order may not be always uh, sufficient. So, if you want to have more accuracy, so we may need to do the interpolation of. Uh, the second order. Okay, I think today we stop uh, uh, this uh, lecture because uh, now next I will start with the second order approximation. Thank you.